Lady Jane Grey's execution was, indeed, a tragic death. History has traditionally seen Lady Jane Grey as an unfortunate teenager whose relation to the royal family saw her thrust as a pawn into the maelstrom of Tudor politics. In truth, the mess that England was in back in 1553 was due in large part to Henry VIII. Although his religious reforms actually proved popular, despite this selfish motivation, his six marriages left three half-siblings with wildly differing views on one another's legitimacy. Lady Jane Grey lived her short life at a time when the country was divided between Catholic and Protestant, and was exported to try to secure the well-being and continuing prosperity of her family, for which she paid the ultimate price. She was proclaimed queen after the death of her cousin, the Protestant King Edward VI, son of Henry VIII, who died on 10 July, 1553. Lady Jane was actually fifth in line to the throne, but Edward willed his crown to her specifically to keep the country Protestant. Edward's half-sister Mary Tudor, who was Henry VIII's daughter with Catherine of Aragon, was actually next in line for the throne but since she was a devout Catholic, Edward chose Lady Jane Grey instead even though she would have been constantly challenged as to her legitimacy to rule. Also, Edward could not name his Protestant half-sister Elizabeth as his successor. Doing so would recognize the legitimacy of Anne Boleyn's marriage to Henry, which would raise questions about the legitimacy of his own birth which came from Henry's next marriage to Jane Seymour. The way Henry VIII went about the Protestant Reformation also brewed dangerous enmity amongst the Catholic subjects of the country. Hence, Lady Jane became a target of the Catholic populace, not to mention a direct threat to Mary Tudor, who saw her own claim to the throne as more legitimate than the poor young Jane. Mary rallied the Privy Council to her favour while the men in Jane's family, comprised of her husband, Lord Guilford Doddy, whom had pretty much talked her into taking the crown so that he could become king, and Dudley's father along with Lady Jane's father, all took up arms in a plot against Mary. On the 20th of July, the council in London unequivocally declared Mary the rightful queen. The men in Jane's family leading the plot were charged with treason and the unwitting Lady Jane was included in this declaration resulting in a sentence of death. Jane was held prisoner in the Tower of London for several months along with her husband. Her subsequent execution was a political necessity for Mary, who later became known as Bloody Mary, thanks to her persecution of Protestant heretics, whom she burned at the stake in the hundreds. Lady Jane Grey was only 16 years of age when she was beheaded on Friday the 12th of February, 1554 at the order of Queen Mary I. At her execution, Lady Jane Grey is said to have died bravely. On the scaffold, she asked the executioner to, please dispatch me quickly. Lady Jane's tragic life has inspired countless artists and writers over the years. She became especially popular in the Victorian period from which de Larich's highly stylized portrayal of her execution is taken. In 1563, her story was included in the Book of Martyrs by the famous English martyrologist John Fox, which was a text detailing the terrible suffering Protestants had to endure from Catholics. The story of Jane's life and early death caused by the lost for power of, not Jane, but the men in her life, deserves to be remembered. Thank you for watching.